conversation with the global CEO of Adobe, Shantanu Narayan. You know, what I want to now understand from you, Shantanu, is where you see the next wave of disruption uh, through the pandemic, you know, e-commerce boom, ed tech, health tech. Where do you believe are the next spaces, payments, we talked about that. Where are the next spaces that you believe that we're going to see this kind of transformative disruption? I think all of those spaces are clearly spaces, you know, where, uh, you know, the pace of innovation is only accelerating. But if there are two that I'm particularly passionate about, and if I was earlier in my career, I would have probably said it. One is, I think, the confluence of what's happening in healthcare mm. and technology. I mean, first, I think it's amazing to see, you know, what the world's been able to do in terms of vaccinations. Yeah. But I think just thinking about how technology can be used to create personalized medicines for rare diseases or oncology, I think we're at the early stages of that. And, you know, to, to a large extent, I think drug discovery is pattern matching. Mm. And so that's an area that I'm particularly excited about. I think education as well and access to education, uh, that's an area that's of particular passion to me because I believe that everybody needs access. And I think through this pandemic, the fact that people don't have to yeah. be in a physical setting, I, you know, when any university used to say, we take pride in the fact that we've only admitted 3% of people, I'm like, it's crazy. You should be ashamed of the fact that you're only admitting 3% when there are, you know, so many other people who are both eligible to be in an institution like yours and worthy of that. And so I think education is the area. If we can democratize education again, I think both even in the India context, yeah, there are just so much more opportunity. So those are two areas, in addition to everything at Adobe, uh, that I'm particularly excited about. You know, speaking of uh, opportunities, and I want to get some clarity from you on this number that you've spoken about. You said that you've never been more confident on the ability to execute on the $205 billion market opportunity ahead of you. Uh, you know, explain this $205 billion market opportunity to me. Well, we're in three businesses today, right? I mean, the traditional history of the company was creativity for all. Mm. And if you just look at the amount of content that's being created, the amount of content that's being consumed, the devices, we talked about the metaverse, AR, video has just absolutely exploded. We're in the sweet spot to enable anybody who has that story to tell, to tell that story. Accelerating document productivity. I mean, look at the number of PDFs that are being created. You know, you can now do a physical signature. It used to be governments and agencies would say, well, we don't consider a, yeah. uh, electronic signature legitimate. That's thrown out of the window. And so I think everything to do with document intelligence and automating document productivity, just an immense, immense opportunity. And the third one is this powering digital businesses. It doesn't matter whether you're a B2C company or a B2B company. It doesn't matter whether you're an Indian company or a global company. You are going to engage with your customers digitally. And you have to create this immersive, personalized experience. And we created the digital marketing category. So I think you add all three of these, and if you think about the secular tailwind for digital, that's what excites us about the opportunity. You know, now I want to talk to you about an issue that I know we've spoken about previously as well, but. Uh, the rise of Indian origin CEOs on the global map. You started the trend along with a few others. Uh, Are you saying I'm old, Shireen? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying you're distinguished. <laughs> but, you know, how do you explain it? And, and I go back again to, to the most recent conversation that I was having with, with people that you know on this issue. Uh, and Piyush Gupta at DBS said... Uh, hat. You know, he, hat, exactly. I do listen yeah, to you. Your... Do, you do listen to me. I'm impressed. Uh, uh, how, how do you explain it as you see it today from from the time that you uh, made it big to what you see happen today I think in that sec segment that you had I mean people talked about a lot of the advantages that we have access to an excellent education system the ability to speak English maybe the immigrant hunger mentality that I think you know was also talked about I think also right now hopefully there are more role models right and if they're role models and people look at it and say, well, if he can do it, I can certainly do it. Uh, and I think, you know, there's more acceptance in the United States that, you know, Indians have. And maybe one of the things that we have in particular is this uh, mix of both technology mm. as well as managerial skills. Mm. I mean, we were technologists at heart, but 
It is so gratifying, and whenever there's a new uh, one who comes, I I met with Lena in London recently, yeah. and I told her, you know, how thrilled we were to have you know somebody uh, like her leading one of the biggest fashion brands, and you know, and we were all offered to be a, a self-help group, you know, if there's any way in which we can help. But it's every time one of those comes, you know, your your heart is filled with a little bit of pride. As you look back at your career, Shantanu, and if I would ask you, but the assumptions that you made when you started off and where you are today. Uh, how much of that has changed? How much of your own approach to management, to business, to leadership has changed? What have you learned or unlearned over the years? Well, it's a lot, Shireen. I mean, in, in all humility, you look at it every year and you say, oh my God, I was clueless, you know, uh, when I first started this a few years ago. And hopefully, you know, I think the intellectual curiosity that you have to want to continue to grow uh, has been the thing uh, that's helped uh, in this particular case. I think for me, what stayed constant is my love for products. I love building products and I love building technology. I think we've talked about the fact that I wanted to be a journalist and you know, Adobe vicariously, I am in the publishing business and I am in the journalism business. So I think the thing that's remained really constant for me is this real affinity with the mission for the company. What's changed dramatically is the scale. You know, we were less than a billion dollars in revenue uh, when I joined. We were a billion dollars in market cap. You know, at our peak, we were 300, we're now 200 billion. So I think the scale and how you manage through this extensive set of people and talent that you have, that's changed. And, you know, I, I think the other thing that's changed a lot is one of the things I like to say at the company is are we looking around the corner enough? Are we disrupting ourselves? And I think people like to do what they're good at, but you're expected to do what I think has more impact for the company. So that's something that I try and think about. And as a management team, our entire management team every year sits down at the beginning of the year and says, what are three things that at the end of the year, if we look back, would we have moved the needle for the company? And I think that's been an exciting uh, part for me and, and growing by having you know, this talent that we have in the company. You know, you, you talked about your love and fascination for products, and I'll end with that. We're finally starting to see some of that story and narrative shape as far as India is concerned. And many people now argue that this is perhaps going to be the decade for India as a product nation. Do you believe that? I, I think India will play a role in that. I think how they play a role beyond the Indian market for the international market, more than just the talent, I think that's something that you know will require uh, a, a little bit more evolution in terms of what happens. But I think access to capital is infinite in India. Access to talent is infinite in India. And the question is, are there enough role models in the Indian context of companies that have you know uh, achieved tremendous success, not just in the Indian context? And I think the more you have of that, that'll pave the way for the next one. So you're much more closely aligned with you know, what's happening on, on that startup. But I think yeah. the startup environment, uh, because what makes the Bay Area so unique, if I were to end, was to say, everybody in the Bay Area knows somebody who's been at a startup. And it makes no difference whatsoever whether the startup was successful or whether the startup failed. Yeah. But you all know somebody who was at a startup that was successful, and you want to be part of that movement. And I think if India can, you know, they've created the infrastructure, they've created the environment. Now you need those success stories where everybody's like, I want to be one of those. Yeah, we hope that we see plenty of those success stories. But Chantanu, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Global Dialogue. Appreciate your time and we look forward to seeing you back here. Thank you for having me. Well, that's it then on this edition of the Global Dialogue. From all of us here on the team, goodbye. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again shortly. Goodbye.